the actions button. If you don't see the little play button down here, what you can do is go to window and just click on actions and that'll pull up the actions tab on the right. So once we do that, just go ahead and click on the new folder button down here at the bottom and you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and name it AE frequency separation 16 bit. Go ahead and click on the new actions button and you can again name it whatever you want. You can call it frequency separation again. We're going to start off by creating a new layer which you guys already know is shift option command N and then we're going to immediately hit E to create a stamp visible layer. So shift option command N then shift option command E and once you have a stamp visible layer just rename it to low frequency or you know whatever it is that will help you remember. <laughs> then we're going to go ahead and create another new layer and another stamp visible layer and we're going to name that one high frequency. So once you rename it to high frequency I want you to go ahead and set the opacity down to zero and this is the weird part that I do that'll make sense for you later so but for now just follow along you set the opacity on the high frequency to zero then select the low frequency and we're gonna hit our Gaussian blur shortcut that we created which was shift option command G and that'll prompt us for with the Gaussian blur um, pop-up window now typically I leave this at 4.6 because I feel like that's a good middle ground to start off with but this is very dependent on on what your photograph looks like if it has a lot of detail in the in the face or if the skin is very blotchy you might need to increase the blurriness or decrease it depending on your image so we're gonna go ahead and hit OK then we're gonna move back to the high frequency layer and we're gonna add the opacity back to 100 percent alright once we've done that Go ahead and go to image, apply image, making sure that the high frequency layer is selected and you're going to get this little window. It's going to ask us where do we want this information to be targeted to and we want to target it to the low frequency. So go ahead and select the low frequency layer and we're going to change the blending mode to add and we're going to change the scale to two if it isn't already there. And then the last thing before you hit OK is to make sure that the invert button is selected. All right, just hit OK. It's going to really look like a high pass filter. On the high frequency layer, we're going to change the blending mode from normal all the way down to linear light. Once we change the blending mode to linear light, the result should be an image that looks exactly like what we started with. Um, next thing is our last, last shortcut that we're going to learn, and it's just simply how to group things together. And what we're going to do is we're going to click with uh, shift click both of the layers and we're gonna hit command G and command G will group both of these together and we can rename it once again to frequency separation and we're gonna just simply select the low frequency and then we're gonna go to the actions panel and hit stop now Remember when we did the adding opacity and removing opacity and that's kind of like a weird thing to do. That was kind of like a weird step that we took. The reason for that is you're going to go you're going to go to the little area that it says Gaussian blur and you're going to check the little box. You're going to click on it. And what this is going to allow you to do is it's going to when you run the Photoshop action, it's actually going to stop at the Gaussian blur and it's going to prompt you with the Gaussian blur window. So let me show you really quickly how it works. We're going to get prompted by the blur screen and then Photoshop goes ahead and finishes the rest of the action. And this is why I actually feel like this is better than most Photoshop uh, frequency separation actions that you can find online.